Another one. Confirm. No, uh, John, are you good to start? Yeah, I was so just come, checking to see how John, many people are. To start. Too, John. <laughs> well represented by the John's here. Uh, uh, yeah, we've got a quorum of John's. Yeah, quorum of John's. We can go. Yeah, every time they can hear. Wrong committee. Wrong Litigious. Bring about a litigious. Uh, uh, well, at uh, f 5.20 in the evening, uh, let's bring the uh, November meeting of the Los Angeles City Health Commission to order. My name is Matthew Sharp. I'm the Vice uh, President of the Commission, uh, and until uh, Commission President Sh Shannon joins us, I'll attempt to preside over the proceedings. And uh, in that order, Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Andres Taylor? Here. Ariola? Here. Braun? Here. Griffith? Here. Hisrich? Here. Cotto? Here. Sharp? Presente. Vic? Here. Eight members present and a quorum. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Uh, very much appreciate your help getting us prepared uh, for this meeting and want to acknowledge you got the information circulated last Thursday well in advance of Brown Act uh, in order to acknowledge the city holiday. So thank you for your hard work uh, regarding that matter. Uh, commissioners, I believe you have received uh, a copy of the minutes of the August 17th, 2016 meeting as part of the electronic packet that preceded uh, our gathered together. Is that correct? Has everyone had a chance to both read and review I will move approval the, measures? Of the minutes. We have a motion to approve the minutes. Do we have a second to that motion? Second. So it's been moved by Commissioner Hissrich and seconded by Commissioner Arriola. All in favor? any discussion of the minutes and or corrections, which occasionally occurs, uh, na ensure your names are spelled correctly and so on. Um, any discussion? No, if, if none, all in favor? I think we, let's do it again, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Abstentions? I abstain. Uh, we acknowledge the Commissioner Vic Saints as you were unable to join us at that meeting, and so I appreciate you acknowledging you wouldn't be here to correct the minutes. Um, our next matter of business, uh, per a, I think, valuable city undertaking to ensure that neighborhood council members are adequately considered in the business and functioning of the city, as there's two of us here, uh, at least, who are part of neighborhood councils. I appreciate this. Pursuant to ordinance number 184243, are there any neighborhood council members present who would like to address this commission on behalf of their neighborhood council? <coughs> Seeing none, hearing none, We'll move forward to our uh, first item of business for this evening. Discussion and possible action on the Los Angeles City Health Commission annual report. I thought one of the things we might do, uh, yeah, would be to take public comment at the beginning of this particular agenda item and uh, ensure that we have the uh, views of various uh, stakeholders present and uh, available to us as we discuss dis and potentially dispose of this particular action item. Um, so f uh, on agenda item number one, we have a uh, Mr. Bully Bull uh, is like to make comment. We'd request you make uh, your comments uh, regarding matters under the jurisdiction of this commission. There is a general public comment item uh, later in the agenda, but f uh, regarding agenda item number one, Mr. Bully Bull. Yes. You don't want me to take it, right? <coughs> Jackass. All right, so the bull right now is a little confused. I just want to point out that I think the whole report is gonna have to be changed because we got a new president. Thrum, 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 thrum. So what he's going to do is repeal and replace Obamacare or gut essential provisions of Obamacare, which will dramatically 
change how you buy insurance and how you get insurance. So you can't have much of a, an annual report if we don't know what the landscape's going to be during the first 100 days of this new president. Now, I'm sure with L.A. County, L.A. County, did you know, voted 71.5% for Hillary Clinton. No. Yeah, they did. That's a lot of bullshit. But that's what happened, right? So 71.5% voted in favor of Hillary in L.A. County, and yet he won the Electoral College, and now we found out he won the popular vote. So now we're facing even more trepidations, because now we're going to be, as a county, completely on the counter-opposite politically and socially from who's going to be controlling Washington for four years. Regarding the agenda item number one? Yeah, your, your report is absolutely moot because what you're going to have now is a whole premise around the entire health care funding, federal matching funds, Obamacare. It's completely changed. You're not going to have a continuation of anything that's happened the last eight years. You're going to have a completely different landscape. So you should defer this report until we see President Trump get in there and, do, and see what he's going to do on the repeal and replace in the first hundred days because they're going to use consolidation to overrule the filibuster. It's going to be major stuff. Thank you, Mr. Bull, for your remarks. Uh, on agenda item number one, we also have received a public comment card from Mr. Adam Cohen. Thank you for joining us. Mr. Cohen, you have two minutes. Yep. Good evening. My name is Adam Cohen. I work for AIDS Healthcare Foundation. Uh, if you haven't seen already, it's a fascinating report by the CDC. They published their annual report in 2016 for the year of 2015 regarding chlamydia, gonorrhea, and syphilis cases in the U.S. Um, all three infections, which will keep me working forever, have increased dramatically. So there are currently 1.5 million cases of chlamydia in the U.S., um, 400,000 cases of gonorrhea, and 24,000 of ca cases of syphilis. So in Los Angeles County specifically, 57,000 cases of chlamydia, 17,500 cases of gonorrhea, and 1,500 cases of syphilis reported just in the last year. Um, due to funding cuts and administrative decisions, the disease intervention specialists who are in charge of finding positive cases and ensuring those cases get treated, because these are all three uh, treatable infections, have been limited to specifically only HIV and syphilis. They are told, do not find anybody with chlamydia and gonorrhea. We just don't have the resources. Considering those infections are also the ones reported the most, that's especially disconcerting. So in addition, we also have the issue now of drug-resistant gonorrhea. The WHO reported on that last month. So that also just adds to the uh, problem that's going on, especially because STDs are devastating when left untreated. So the benefits of STD prevention are often invisible. Um, an infection that's prevented is one that, you know, you've never had to experience, so it's not counted or reported. So doing this job in public health, health care, is a thankless job, just like every public health prevention effort. It's always been thankless. It'll always continue to be thankless. This health commission is, you're not here for the glory. You're here to make sure that the people of Los Angeles City receive the best possible public health care. So I just want to make sure that we address the fact that STDs are rising at an alarming rate in Los Angeles County and throughout the U.S. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. Also on agenda item number one, we have Herman, a.k.a. Trumpy. Uh, sorry, uh, Mr. Bully Bull, you've used your two well, minutes. But I, we look forward to hearing from you in a future agenda. I believe you've submitted cards for two and three, so we'll can hear I, from you at that point. Can I talk for my friend? Uh, no, you're not permitted to speak on someone else's behalf. We'll look forward to hearing from you on agenda items two and three. Thank you. He likes Trump. Okay. So we have uh, received useful input, I believe, actually, on uh, the City Health Commission report. My uh, suggestion in specific, I guess, reaction to the comments we've received in incorporating the, in the discussion is that we do need to uh, augment the healthy living uh, section of the report to more accurately reflect uh, the recommendation regarding preventing disease transmission. And I have a suggestion uh, that I had a chance to talk to Dr. Mandel about uh, regarding the um, uh, future of the Affordable Care Act and how we address that in, in future meetings in terms of the future of the Health Commission. So I do want to acknowledge and uh, appreciate those 
remarks from our first uh, speaker. I think it is uh, applicable and important for us to consider. I think that's during ag agenda items for future discussion. I don't think we have the capacity to address that in the uh, report that's uh, to be discussed at this point. Is that a reasonable um, approach to uh, incorporating those remarks? The assignment we receive in the ordinance to uh, f propose a report is written in a couple different ways. I at one level, it's to describe the health needs of Los Angeles residents. Uh, in another sentence, it describes a strategic plan of specific strategies and actions that city departments should take, and then in a few other ways, it looks at sort of oversight of the county departments. We have a, a, a jumble of assignments, I think would be one way to put it, that comprise uh, what's supposed to be done on an annual basis, and obviously getting the first uh, iteration put together is, is simply the most difficult because there's no template to work from since the city of Los Angeles has never adopted a report in this particular context, even though there's been a plan for Healthy LA and there's been some other reports the county has done. So I think I just want to try and at least summarize where I think we are to date. I'm not actually getting to making a recommendation. I just want to summarize where we're at so we have all the same facts, see who else has information to contribute as to where we're at, and then I welcome your suggestions and or perhaps the Commission President will join us to uh, try and formulate a decision about what we do next. But the facts that I have are there have been three different um, sets of commissioners that have gotten together in different forms to hold between one and three conference calls uh, to talk through a variety of subject matter that has come in front of us from both uh, speakers and presenters as well as from the professional expertise of members gathered. And those uh, subjects have been put into three buckets. One is healthy living. Another has been called medical services, but I think could also be renamed kind of fire emergency services. Uh, then the third bucket is called homeless. And um, there have been three documents that have uh, assembled uh, with a range of detail, uh, some very detailed facts about the problem statement and uh, recommendations, others a little more on the recommendation side, others a little more summary in effect of what we heard as presentations. So we have three different style uh, in front of us, I guess, three different formats of these documents. and. Uh, they have each worded recommendations targeting different parts of government. Some are <coughs> written towards city, some are written towards county. Uh, some, I think, identify the need for the state or federal government to improve funding or action. So I think that's where we're at. Each of the documents has undergone a few different revisions. Let me stop and ask who sort of has additional information to add, and then I think the next phase is make sure everyone sees things. I have a couple pieces of paper I'll uh, see who else does, and maybe we can trade things around. I wasn't prepared to be the uh, chair this evening, so I don't have all the paper we might need. But let me pause, see who else has information, and let's see what we can circulate to enable some sort of discussion about how to try and narrow it and move forward. Well, John, if please. I may, the, um, the medical services work group, I thought that, you know, it's been massaged a few times. I thought the last iteration was particularly good. And, um, you know, I mean, I, to the degree, I mean, that, that sounds like it as far as I'm concerned in terms of that piece and the list, there's the way the recommendations are formulated and the, and the factual background and so on. Great. So let's pause on that for a sec. Maybe we can just do them one, one by one. It's probably the easiest. Uh, any, who else here has seen that uh, document? Let's start with that. Has anyone else seen it besides John and I, or Commissioner Hickrick and I? So uh, why don't we take a brief moment, and if you could r at least read the recommendations. I'll, I'll give it a shot. I've been kind of having a little illness, but I'll see what I can do. Just, just the recommendations part. Okay, the recommendations starting with the first one. Uh, and the fast response vehicle, uh, this is the pickup truck size vehicle equipped with limited firefighting capability and a full range of EMS equipment staffed by two firefighter paramedics on patrol in busy EMS demand areas and able to respond quickly to calls and initiate care pending the arrival of an ambulance. This can eliminate the need to dispatch the fire engine, usually cuts response time, and can summon the appropriate ambulance if necessary. 
this program is with county EMS approval undergoing evaluation. So I guess the recommendation, just to paraphrase, that would be that we continue to watch that. Seems like a good, good idea, and so we would recommend that that evaluation continue. I guess is is that the way it was? Okay. Recommendation number two: the nurse practitioner response unit, a 12-month pilot project approved by the county, in which a paramedic and a nurse practitioner respond to calls in an ambulance, particularly from super users to try to treat and release the patient and arrange a more appropriate source of medical care. Again, something that's being evaluated and seems to be working well. Uh, recommendation three, nurse practitioner at dispatch, a soon to be implemented program to supplement the LAFD's recently improved 9-11 response protocol whereby a low acuity caller could be referred to a nurse practitioner in the dispatch headquarters after screening by a trained dispatcher. The nurse could take the time to determine the caller's needs and offer a clinic referral, dispatch of the nurse practitioner unit, dispatch of a basic life support ambulance staffed by EMTs rather than paramedics, or even dispatch a taxi to transport to a clinic. So yeah, the, the dispatchers down there are very good and they've got an improved protocol to go through when someone calls but some of them, it would be good if they could just be referred to somebody to talk through uh, the, the issues before they start rolling out the red lights and sirens. Uh, recommendation four, sobriety emergency response unit. A BLS ambulance, that's a basic life support ambulance. That's EMTs, not paramedics, but EMTs. A, B, a BLS ambulance with a trained counselor who would determine if the patient required detox and sobering and an EMT to check basic medical needs, allowing transport to a sobering center rather than an emergency room. The county, in cooperation with the city, is developing the sobering centers, particularly near Skid Row. This program is in development. You know, I, I, I think we ought to be very clear, because I'm not sure that it can be an EMT to make a medical clearance. It might have to be a paramedic to provide a medical clearance in the field. So we, that's one that, just as I read it, occurs to me. We may need to verify that. Recommendation five, a mobile mental health unit, an ambulance staffed with a nurse practitioner and an LPS certified social worker able to evaluate patients with mental health crises, determine any medical needs, and if clear medically, transport if necessary to an LPS designated mental health facility rather than an emergency room. The program is currently in development. LPS stands for Lannerman Petrus Short. That's the legislation that allows, holds, 5150 holds and so on. Uh, recommendation six, assistance with super users, EMS calls. Although the Los Angeles City Health Commission has no operational responsibility for LAFD EMS, the volume of health service provided by the agency certainly warrants attention from a commission charged with reviewing and addressing health needs in the city, especially those that are carried out in concert with the Los Angeles County Health Agency. Uh, you know, there's two listed, two at recommendation six here, so maybe six and six, I just realized that. <laughs> Uh, another rationale for the health commission to understand the work of the agency providing EMS in the city is that each call for emergency service represents a failure to provide an optimally healthy environment. Each homeless serial inebriate found lying in the street is a prime example of failed prevention and inadequate shelter. Individuals with chronic illness who repeatedly call 911 for uh, relief illustrate failures in our ba basic health care system. Every preventable injury, accident, every gunshot wound, and every serious behavioral assaultive incident reflects near-term failure of prevention efforts. The thousands of EMS calls for cardiorespiratory and stroke incidents in many cases are the result of failed prevention efforts and limitations of the health care system. I guess this would be recommendation seven now. That sounds to me like a preamble. It does, but it's it was written here, so I you know we I think it does need a little editorial. There was a preamble which I did not read. I just went to the recommendation. We appreciate that. 
Uh, so recommendation, which I guess will be seven, LA City Health Commission to convene key city departments that supported a ACA implementation in Los Angeles prom by promoting covered California, Healthy Way LA, and medical Medicare expansion. Uh, Mayor's Office, Community Health Insurance Advocate to identify ways uh, of strengthening the use of insurance, navigation of medical care, and specific adver advocacy requests on behalf of city residents. As we've heard, that may be modified as time goes forward, but I'm sure there will not be an abandonment of providing care for these folks, or at least I'm hopeful there won't be. So, I, you know, in terms of summarizing uh, the city's main provision of health care, which is emergency services, I think that's a reasonable set of recommendations. Um, the, the preamble to it would have pointed out that all of it has to be uh, operated under the aegis overall of the county uh, health, uh, Department of Health Services uh, Emergency Medical Services Division. <coughs> Thank you for reading all of that. Okay. Commissioner, uh, Commissioner President Shannon has uh, joined us and Zoom cha chairing the meeting. I'll share with you offline just a second where we are in all of this. O other questions, comments regarding the EMS working group uh, recommendations that uh, Commissioner Hisrick read? Uh, my, my comment would be I, I think that they're useful. Um, it's, it's good work. One piece that would be useful would be for us to recommend uh, a metric or an outcome, whether it's a process metric or an outcome metric related to maybe not each one, but to the basket for th uh, so that we can, um, uh, which would be a way if we're imagining this as an ongoing process, that we could say, well, some of these things were implemented, um, but we're looking at against some metric of what sort of impact, what, what we're trying to follow as, as an indication that we're making progress. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, maybe that group that was suggested to get together could take a look at that because outcome measures of all of this, as you can appreciate, are a little tricky. Right. And I, I would think that uh, among some of these entities, they are gathering uh, uh, process or outcome metrics. And so rather than dictating one that may or may not be feasible, it would be great, as you, I think as you're implying, to find out which are ones that are being followed so that those could be, among those could be appropriate ones to be adopted. The, um, the process measures, things like reduction of what they call wall time, or the paramedics are leaning against the wall till they get a bed, those are things that the agencies do uh, keep working on and I think is important. The outcome measures from a health perspective of those that are transported are to be a little comp, I mean, it's not impossible, but it could be interesting to try to do. Other questions and comments regarding the EMS working group recommendation? I have two comments for adjustments that I think will increase its uh, consumption by its target audience. One is I th think we need to find some way to acknowledge that the first six of the items that you read were um, are under the jurisdiction of the city's fire commission. Right. And well, uh, I think we've said that in there, but I, you know, emphasize. Then the seventh one, which came from me, referring to the need to revise how the city looks at the actual health care enrollment activities that were underway. I do fully acknowledge that the developments of the last week changed the context mm -hmm. around that. And uh, as we heard from uh, Mr. Bull and others across the nation, it probably makes sense to defer uh, action regarding uh, the Affordable Care Act uh, to right. a future meeting to have a better uh, sense for the, the scope of what sort of changes are underway every day there's sort we of a new update more ambulances. <laughs> <laughs> so my suggestion would be that the very the very item that I propose as an addition to that list which you read off as I think number seven uh, that that not be 
uh, included at this time, but perhaps oh, be captured. Get together uh, to look at that. Yeah. Yeah, I, it's it's distinct from the EMS issues, which are sort of a close cohort cut. of recommendations for the fire commission to uh, look at or actually respond to. I think a couple of them. Sort of, of endorsing the actions, I guess you could say, of the department and saying, right on. How can we help? Wouldn't you say? I mean. I mean, the Fire Commission and the, and the Bureau of the Fire Department that are trying to implement these things. I'm not familiar with the status of each of these. I know a couple are in pilot phase. I'm not certain of the scale up nor of the sort of budgetary commitments that may or may not be. Well, I think that that is something to watch because, as you point out, Ron, the, the evaluation of them, will it be determined that the nurse practitioner, for example, is economically feasible to continue? Is it working for them? Is it accomplishing for the dollars spent what they want to do? Uh, and some of the other ones as well, like that rap. Uh, you could ask some of the firefighter types about the fa fast response vehicle, and they go, oh yeah, right, that's terrific. On the other day, the, you may have seen about two weeks ago, some poor guy fell downtown and was impaled on a fence. Well, the fast response vehicle was the one that got there within moments and, you know, s s stabilized him and got him. So, you know, I mean, if you're the guy on the fence, that quick vehicle is um, you're very happy with. So, I mean, the evaluation of those things is going to be kind of ongoing. Anyway. Just a general. Can I just ask you Is there a plan to do uh, any type of resource mapping um, around, uh, there are lots of services that are available um, through federally qualified health centers and other agencies, whether we be doing any resource mappings to see where you've got oversaturation or where there are gaps in the system mm -hmm. that, could, that the commission can make recommendations to, to fill in consort with um, the agency. I don't know if there's data available. If there is, is it feasible for us to look at that data? Because we're, we're answering a broad set of questions and there are lots of, I mean, we are a federally qualified health center. We're looking at, you know, um, all of the, the, some of the things that um, we're looking at here, substance abuse, tobacco cessation, <laughs> we're looking at, um, the incidence of diabetes, hypertension, the impact it's having on, and we're also looking at, the, at developing a health neighborhood, and that's one of the things that was uh, mentioned in the plan, whether we should recommend that they exacerbate their efforts to get the neighborhoods going, and whether we're going to do resource mapping. I just... Uh, Commissioner Griffith, I'm aware that during the Hack for LA mm -hmm. event, which is an effort to bring software developers to bear on municipal problems, this was one of the team projects. Okay. So the FQHCs, as well as two or three other layers of health uh, services information, have been geocoded and put into a visualization alongside a number of other social services data points in a map that's available through data dot LA data LA city dot data uh, that I, I'm, I'm getting the address wrong on top of my head as part of the city's data portal that information is now available I have no sense for whether it's accurate or well utilized but I know that was one of the team projects and I'm happy to find the link and I'll send it okay. Okay, so I just want to um, go over sort of the process for um, the annual report. So I did just circulate um, to the public and to all the commissioners all of the final recommendations on both homelessness and the EMS, um, which means that we can actually vote on the recommendations and complete the writing of the report within the next two weeks. Um, so if there, if you want to pull out the ACA section, John, or if there's other sections that have been submitted, if you could let us know before we vote on recommendations on that particular section, that would be great. 
and we are so we're a part of what, what we need to do tonight is just vote on the recommendations as you can see from what I've distributed, we are a good ways away in term, I mean, not a good ways away, good uh, ways along in terms of actually writing out sections of the report. Um, and I think the contract with Cal State Northridge uh, stipulates that the final report will be distributed by December 19th, although I was talking to staff today and they think they can have it done within the next two weeks. Mm -hmm which would be circulated from this body, from the 2015-2016 um, Health Commission. One more section that we're looking for, is that is that right? No, well, this is the homeless section. And the medical services. The medical services section, plus um, the all the information that you get, that you wrote up, well, that's um, is included in here. Within, right. It's it, basically within this. Right, it's all within this. Yeah. So there were three documents that I printed up that Cal State Northridge drew up, including the interview with Dr. Steven Sanko. Right, but I mean, isn't there uh, another environmental health piece or something no, like there's, that? No, no, there's three sections. There's homelessness, lifestyles, and the third section is the- Medical services. Uh, medical services. Is the lifestyles here yet? The healthy living working group recommendations were circulated Oh, yes, the earlier last one. week, okay. and no one had any okay. changes. All right. had two edits which we included to correct okay. about the changes. All right. And then Commissioner Cotto had made some uh, outreach and actually did a number of in-person meetings to clarify the section on active transportation and pedestrian safety <coughs> and uh, has incorporated, uh, you speak, you speak on your own. <laughs> as to what, what else has changed since the written <coughs> version that was circulated last month. Uh, yes, I um, went uh, to the Department of Transportation and met with uh, one of their staff members uh, to get a better clarification of the report they made here on Vision Zero in March to see um, what else could be done. Uh, one thing that was encouraging was that um, as they're working to implement Vision Zero and reduce the um, the high-risk corridors of accidents. Uh, instead of doing that independent of uh, the healthy plan for a healthy LA plan, they actually um, showed how there's a big overlap of their accident-prone corridors, along with the neighborhoods that have a lot of uh, disequity in. Uh, health, and so they're going to work towards uh, prioritizing those corridors. They use the map from Healthy LA, and uh, on top of that, and so um, these were very um, interesting facts that were discovered, and it was put into a recommendation uh, uh, made uh, for the healthy living part. And one other uh, recommendation that is coming from, um, and this is from the Department of Transportation, and this is um, more of a long-term goal, but um, what they want to do is, um, I'll just read what I uh, wrote in. Recommend to the mayor and city council to pursue legislation to support automat automated speed enforcement making speeding tickets from speed cameras more like a parking ticket, lower fines, no points on your license, civic edu adjudication process, and dedicate any revenue from the program back to safety improvements and not the city's general fund. And this is to you know prevent the appearance that it's a revenue generating project, but use that money uh, to help better the safety uh, and reduce the accidents. So these were the two uh, uh, added recommendations since last month's meeting. Okay. Um, so are there any changes to the EMS medical services section other than are we um, moving to take out the ACA portion of this? Well, um, that Matthew suggests, suggests uh, that possibility, I guess. 
Uh, I would recommend that we keep it because I think uh, it's going to be, it's uncertain what the time frame is for and in what manner the AC will change. It's mm -hmm. certainly yeah. going, whatever the federal policy is, we'll need to have a group that are looking at it. So I think that the concept behind the recommendation is sound. And uh, so I'm in favor of keeping it as it is. And the details of how it, it will flow will follow how what's happening in Washington. Yeah. Okay, and then there is, uh, I'll, I'll move on then if there are no other changes. Okay. I think there was a recommendation that you read that you would acknowledge we aren't sure. Oh, there was just, yeah, there was one question, question I had. Question you raised that ought to be. About whether an, e an EMT can clear medically. In other words, you know, there was the uh, one where they're going to do the uh, psych, uh, uh, the ability to handle the behavioral issues. Um, uh, let me see which one that is. That's uh, yeah. number four. Four, I think. Number four. Yeah, it says a BLS ambulance with a trained counselor. Uh, maybe uh, since the fellow from Northridge has been in touch with them down there a lot, could just verify uh, if they're going to clear medically. Can that be done by an EMT, or does it have to be done by a paramedic? Because there are rules about that, and I'm just not sure. I mean, if they show up on scene and some guy's down, uh, you know, can they properly clear him medically and determine that, yeah, it's just a, a behavioral issue and transport him directly to, for example, the Exodus Center where they don't have, to, they don't have doctors per se, they handle the behavioral issue. So that was just something that I was not 100% sure of. Uh, so would you feel comfortable changing that word to an EMT if possible? Well. Or if practicable or. Uh, well, just because if it's a BLS ambulance, I mean, you get into all this terminology. A BLS ambulance is basic life support. That's an EMT only. That's not a paramedic. It's an ALS ambulance, is a advanced life support. Why don't you, I'll see if I can get an answer tomorrow, okay? And I, I, I don't know, I mean, I, don't, I can't dream it up now. Well, it seems like there's wording that we could probably add in here that would say, you know, like if possible or as appropriate, right? So as appropriate, so if, okay. if we at least vote on that tonight to say as how, appropriate, then that will give us how about not a little leeway. An, an, a, an emergency ambulance with a trained counselor uh, and an appropriate a medically trained technician to check basic medical needs or okay. something like that. I'm just trying to wordsmith it a little bit. Just to be, make sure we're not, it, cause it's conceivable that an EMT can, but I'm not sure of it. Okay, so the wording is an inappropriate. Take out the BLS at the first part. Okay, just an write an ambulance. An emergency okay. ambulance with a trained counselor. Okay. After clearance, after medical clearance by an appropriate medical professional something like that how about medically trained professional okay okay great we'll see what you know and we can we get a chance we can fix it later but okay I just want to be clear on that okay all right great um, the homelessness section hasn't changed in terms of the recommendations that we made last month it's just been written out now so it's in written form as you can see um, so the basic recommendations were for the housing for health program for the city of Los Angeles to explore opportunities to expand the county of Los Angeles housing for health program by providing financial and community support which is in line with the resolution that we passed last December um, and for the city of Los Angeles to explore the implementation of a flexible subsidized housing pool to increase access to permanent affordable housing for chronic homeless populations with underlying health conditions flexible subsidized housing pool is a, a pool of money that is separate from HUD um, and doesn't require people to necessarily um, 
get vouchers and sort of run around the city looking for a landlord. Instead, there's a master lease program that's attached to the flexible housing, um, subsidized housing pool, and the county contracts with a company called Brilliant Corners, and then the landlord-tenant relationship is between Brilliant Corners and the owner of the property, so that basically, I mean, this, this is just uh, sort of putting it, um, you know, in a very uh, simple form, but basically the person who's homeless then gets keys instead of having to run around uh, with a voucher looking for a landlord. Um, so that's, so we've already gotten sort of behind that policy, those policies in that program in December. Um, there is a section on bathrooms. We want to adopt a policy to increase the number of bathrooms available to homeless residents to one per 25 homeless people who are homeless uh, in the city of Los Angeles. That is the World Health Organization's recommendation in terms of a minimum of one toilet per 25 users to maintain a sanitary environment. Um, Skid Row, just to give you, uh, you know, just one example of an area that's concentrated with people who are homeless. Um, there's eight to ten to eleven thousand people who are homeless, and there are only six bathrooms that are open 24 hours. Um, Potable drinking water and healthy food recommendations were to increase the availability of water through drinking fountains, increase the number of bathrooms with sinks, uh, appeal to state and federal government to increase food stamp funding, educate shelters and other feeding programs on the importance of increasing healthy food choices, including produce, uh, explore with local food banks, increasing the number of times an individual can access any given food bank. Many of them uh, restrict individuals from coming into food banks to once a month, sometimes twice a month, and so it creates a situation where somebody who is homeless is moving farther and farther away from where their things are uh, in order to find food, and typically food stamps run out after two weeks, and so at the end of the month, people are sort of crossing each other, trying to get to food banks where they're still eligible to get food. Um, sobering centers, the recommendation, um, is that we should explore supporting the expansion of sobering centers throughout all areas of Los Angeles. Uh, these sobering centers provide better care for homeless, uh, alcohol-dependent persons, and improve health outcomes, decrease the number of inappropriate ambulance trips to the emergency department for homeless, alcohol-independent individuals, decrease the number of inappropriate um, ED visits for homeless, alcohol, and dependent individuals and create an alternative uh, to booking individuals arrested for public inebriation. Um, so there is one that will be opening up, um, which is on Main Street uh, next to the Housing for Health offices. Um, and they need resources and um, it, it actually will decrease the amount of money that the city is spending as well. Um, uh, obviously on <laughs> policing and uh, ambulances and that kind of thing. Um, so that was our recommendation. Um, on health access, discharge planning, transportation, um, our recommendations were to support a shuttle system to county hospitals and clinics. Um, one of the reasons for that is that the eligibility for housing for health is that you need to visit a county hospital or clinic twice in one month um, for somebody who is chronically homeless. And so this is um, a fairly uh, easy eligibility to meet for somebody who is chronically homeless. The problem is that there isn't the transportation for people to get to those hospitals or clinics, particularly in areas like Venice, um, where they have a free clinic there, but it is not uh, part of the county system. But if we had a shuttle that was going to Harbor UCLA, a lot of people are in the street right now would be eligible for the Housing for Health program. So supporting a shuttle system to county hospitals and clinics is one of our recommendations. Um, expanding transportation vouchers um, for the same reason so that people can get to doctor's appointments. 
um, and to county hospitals and clinics, expanding access to consultants and other medical providers in areas with large homeless populations. Um, we did hear from someone last month um, stating that there were not enough consultants uh, who were close, and so it created uh, transportation barriers for several people who are homeless, and then explore working uh, with shelters to provide 24-hour access. That obviously is an issue because um, when people are kicked out in the daytime, uh, they don't have access to food, um, so they typically end up going to fast food places or small convenience stores. Um, they also, if they're on medication and are storing their medication, they don't have access to their medication. And obviously for people who are insulin dependent, um, that creates uh, a problem um, in terms of accessing their medication. So um, there is a movement already in the city council. I know Mike Bonin um, has been talking about this to try to um, get more shelters to be open 24-7 uh, um, to provide uh, you know, shelter for people who are homeless and make sure that they have access to the things that they need. Under affordable housing, um, our recommendations were to expand homeless housing, which is a spe specific type of housing that's geared specifically to people who are homeless, uh, prevent affordable housing developers contracting with the City of Los Angeles from excluding the homeless population in the application process. Um, we've seen a lot of that where in the application process it requires 36 months of permanent rental history in order to rent an affordable housing unit, even if it's been subsidized by the City of Los Angeles. So we want to... Um, obviously make the council aware of that. A lot of council members are aware of that now, um, but that would be a recommendation in terms of um, breaking down a barrier for people who are homeless. Um, explore more accountability from nonprofits contract with City of Los Angeles to provide housing for homeless individuals and families and reduce barriers for homeless individuals and families obtaining services from shelters and nonprofits administering homeless set aside vouchers. So that, that's just a transparency issue where um, if the city contracts with a nonprofit, that the nonprofit is able to sort of show what uh, the pathway is for somebody who comes to that nonprofit for services and how they are then brought into housing. And a lot of that is becoming a requirement for HUD anyway, <laughs> um, and probably will be from the state because some legislation just recently passed. Um, so that recommendation will probably come regardless uh, in terms of the flow of money uh, from federal and state government. Um, veterans, we're just expanding access to housing and medical services and expedite service connections. So uh, the issue here basically is even with the um, increase in HUD VASH vouchers for veterans. Um, a lot of veterans are not connecting to those services. And so uh, we want to just expand uh, access centers so that veterans are um, educated on what the actual process is for them obtaining housing and services. Um, and the city can obviously aid in that. Um, and then the last section is um, on heroin overdose. Um, and this was uh, based on homeless health care's recommendations that um, we provide widespread availability of the drug Narcan for any groups working with homeless populations, including but not limited to first responders, nonprofit workers, and government employees. And those are the recommendations. Are there any questions or issues that people have? I know we went over them last month and I sort of explained them, but. It's really impressive. Okay, so I have. I was pausing oh. to see if anyone doesn't have any. I have seven different ones, so I would love to hear from others first, so I don't get tired hearing my own. Anybody else? <laughs> Starting with veterans, recommendation: expand access to housing, medical services. I recommend that more detailed language be provided. This is already a priority for city and county government. I think it will be more useful to provide some additional detail as to what expanded access means in this particular context, given the enormous focus in the last couple of years on the veterans. So I encourage the subcommittee to consider well, that. Uh, so you should make, you need to make the motion now, though, to make the changes, I'm right? Because we'll, we need to vote on it well, today. I don't know if, okay, I'm going to raise a number of issues, and I will, at the end, uh, 
take reactions as to how, how we, we handle them. Uh, but I'm, let me identify a number of issues and see if anyone has additional comments or reactions. On the previous page under affordable housing, I think the first bullet, expand homeless housing, needs either more detail or to be removed. I think it's, it, it's insufficient and it's discussed at some length in the first page on uh, the two programmatic areas that housing is to be expanded. In the third one, I think we need to define what we mean by more accountability if we're going to demand more accountability. Explore more accountability is the third bullet from nonprofits contracted with the city. Uh, has someone who knows some of those folks, I'm sure they would be uh, mystified as to the sentence. I, I get the drift of the challenge. I think we need to prescribe okay. a solution um, or can, some language. Okay, so what if we change that to uh, transparency as opposed to accountability? Uh, others from the working group, what, what's intended by that uh, accountability and then how is it sort of solved? Is it a web-based thing? Is it a contract that's provided? How is, how is the objective accomplished? Well, I think the council should really be deciding that. In other words, we can make broad recommendations and we can point out what the issues are, but I think getting too into the weeds of policy to say it has to be web-based, um, I, I think that's just too specific. I think that should be a conversation that's had between city council and nonprofits, and there may be many different suggestions that they mm -hmm. have, uh, which, you know, that, that I think that's why I try to keep it um, fairly broad because we're not necessarily creating policy here. So if we did say web based, I mean, what, what would that even be based on? I'm not sure. I just believe that several of these strike me as insufficiently detailed and I'm raising that and then we can in at some point in a few minutes uh, talk through you know whether folks agree or disagree so I'd love to hear from some others in reactions I think the section on the uh, transportation planning is a really great opportunity I'm wondering when it's when the word shuttles capitalized is that a specific system we're suggesting is replicated this is a health access discharge planning and transportation Okay, are we going back a page? I'm, I'm actually going backwards. I'll acknowledge that. Okay. I started at the back section where you'd finished and the page right before. Okay. This is, uh, um, maybe it's page no, five. No, shuttle, shuttle can be lowercase, but. So it's not a I specific system we're referring to or a vendor or something. Right. Okay. Thank you. Uh, They're I all very broad. I think this is an area where my guess is the city can do some things really quickly, which is great. Uh, on the sobering centers, this is a recommendation that's also in the city homeless strategy. And so I guess sort of I say the same thing in terms of the city should explore supporting the expansion of sobering centers. There's actually a specific recommendation, which I don't have off the top of my head, in the homeless strategy about the uh, three or four locations that were, I think, requested by the county for that to happen first. So my question is sort of how does this relate to what's underway or not underway that we need to emphasize ought to be underway faster? So the county is designating specific locations where they feel, um, you know, for, for sort of this pilot project, I guess you would call it, um, where they feel that those locations are necessary. Again, I think that's sort of a conversation between the city and the county and that we can show as a health commission that we support these sobering centers, that we support the city um, doing what they can to make sure that they're providing whatever support they decide on. But I think getting too specific makes it seem like we are um, you know, trying to tell the council what to do as opposed to saying to the council, this is something that we get behind. These are the reasons, these are the problems that we see, and we would like you to support this program. I think going farther than that is sort of dictating to them, and I think I, I would not feel comfortable at this point, especially given the fact that they're sort of moving on this. I don't feel comfortable getting too specific because we are not, in this commission or in anyone in this commission is not involved in those discussions between the city and county, so the recommendations that we make could be off. So I think it's really important to be broad and to show our support as opposed to being specific. 
Thank you for your response. I um, see it a little differently. We'll get to what to do about it in just a minute. A couple others on the, I guess, again, going back further on the previous page. Uh, the increased availability of water through what are now being called hydration stations. The county public health agency is funding those instead of drinking fountains because of lead. Okay, we can change uh, that. That's uh, a new um, technology which is being deployed not enough. I think it's extremely important. Um, the third bullet um, says appeal to state and federal government to increase food stamp funding. Uh, the state doesn't fund any food stamps except for undocumented immigrants, children. That's so right. I think it's... Uh, but uh, that's important. So <laughs> my, su my suggestion would be that our recommendation would be to uh, re request the f federal government to increase CalFresh funding. It's actually called CalFresh now. Not, it's not well uh, it's only ca it's actually called CalFresh in California and it's called snap nationally it's not called food right. stamps anywhere so in the city of LA for city policymakers it'd be called CalFresh funding and just to take the state out of it the state doesn't fund it except for immigrants that's been true for 20 years if we're asking them to start a state f food benefit that's a sort of a different recommendation well, I think funding for immigrants, though, is important. So if we're asking them to increase it, then we, they should be going to the state and the federal government. I agree. It's just not in, this is the homeless section of the report. I think the, the subsequent discussion explains a food insecurity issue, which is pronounced and severe among homeless persons. And that is a problem of federal food stamp funding level. Okay. I don't, I would not agree with that change. Okay. Then uh, what else? explore with local food banks, increasing the number of times an individual can access any given food bank it's actually food pantries and or congregate feeding sites the food bank doesn't set the rule the food banks the warehouse where grocery retailers drop stuff off then that goes to food pantries and shelters and soup kitchens and a number of other places that set their own rules the food bank doesn't play a role in setting those rules um, I don't know. my suggestion is to delete that recommendation because they do not have enough food and this system, 53 million pounds a year, is stretched too thin, period. And each local provider is attempting to balance uh, a demand that widely exceeds the donations. The technology at the grocery level has dramatically improved the efficiency of grocery stores, and there's a fraction of the food being donated to the food bank and then to the food pantries, as was true 10 years ago. So there's a total shortage of food. Each agency has retained for the 30 or so years the system's been in place its autonomy, discretion, et cetera, to um, determine how to best meet its, its community need. And uh, I wouldn't encourage the city council to, to prescribe to them how uh, to do that. I would say, though, that the number of times that somebody who is homeless is accessing the food pantries right. isn't changing. It's what the only thing that's changing is that they're moving farther and farther away mm. so that they're meeting the eligibility requirements mm. for each food pantry that they're going to. So somebody who may be going like down the street to Emmanuel Presbyterian Church and can only go there once a month mm -hmm. is going to Emmanuel Presbyterian Church, and then the next week is taking their family, you know, uh, two miles away to the next food pantry and then the next week going farther. So the amount of food that's there isn't changing. It's just the number of times that people, or the number of times that they're accessing it isn't. The only thing that's changing is that now you're adding transportation costs onto uh, someone who is homeless and doesn't have money for the most part. Um, so I, I would disagree with that change. I, I, I need to interject briefly. Uh, I don't think you can make a unanimous decision, uh, uh, unilateral decision, to not accept the change. Uh, accept the. No, we're going to vote on all of these. Right, right. Yeah. I think we need to keep track of all these suggestions and see. I if am there's keeping track of them. But you just yeah. said that you disagree. Right. I'm just saying but that I disagree with this. I'm just oh, letting okay. the committee right. know that. So, okay. <laughs> I, I, I don't think this should be a discussion between just two of you. I think this should, the discussion should be open to the entire uh, yeah, commission. Yeah, it, it will, but we're going to do public comment before. But this we is do not the that. time to edit it. I mean, I, I think we need to have two different versions um, that well, then needs to be distributed, and then have people. Look you know, we at can it make amendments. We're making amendments to the document. I think yeah, I'm, I'm a little. Uh, I, I, I'd add that, that I'm um, I'm unclear about the process. There's there's this as the the doc the draft. 
uh, we're getting a, some some ideas about some feedback about particular things. It's right. helpful so to get your thought too. But we're uh, but uh, but then uh, I guess the we're going to get uh, our process. Our process this evening would be uh, to. Uh, what, what's so we'll, okay. to finish so job? for this particular section, since Matthew has some amendments that he would like to make, we'll take each one of those changes one by one and vote on them. Mm -hmm. We can't do that actually until we do public comment. So we'll have, so Matthew is going public through, comment. yeah, we have to do public comment again. Um, so Matthew's going through changes that he would like to see. We'll hear from pub from the public and public comment, and then we'll go over each one of those, and we'll just decide as a group whether or not we'd like to make that amendment or not. Okay, okay thanks. Okay. And just so that uh, the record is clear, I did uh, advise the um, uh, commission president that we it looks like that we need to uh, redo the public comment because the report was not available earlier to the public members and I think in in fairness to the public members we need to reopen their ability to address the uh, commission yes I, th I think that'll be consistent with the Brown Act okay Matthew anything else in that section I completely agree with the general relief recommendation I think it's extremely important to raise that level above 221 on the very first page there's sort of a page and a half discussion of housing for health as the primary strategy to create more shelter for the un unsheltered. And I am at a, uh, I have a difficult time situating these recommendations in the context of three <coughs> major developments that have occurred since this was last presented to us by County Director Dr. Katz in December. The city adopted a homeless strategy. Then the city appropriated $130 million of new money in the city budget for this calendar year. And then we as taxpayers added $1.2 billion in bond authority to construct more housing. So there's a lot that's happened since this recommendation was initially put in front of us. And it's helpful, or at least to me, again, speaking only on my own behalf here, to know where this now fits amidst a very large number of very positive and what seemed to me uh, useful developments. The city uh, presented a status report last week to its committee on this. I should say the chief uh, city administrative officer's office presented a status update, noted a number of things weren't moving forward, a number of things were. And so my question for the, the group in terms of these recommendations which were in front of us last December is whether or not there are other ways to as you suggest, lift up to council members what they should be focused on now to help house the unsheltered population in a context where there's just lots of changes that have happened since we first saw this. Sure. So I can explain how it fits into the context of all three of those. So housing for health is actually a model and a delivery system. Um, that means that that model and delivery system is not going to change within the county. Um, and it's certainly not going to change um, necessarily within the city because it's a housing first model and the state has now adopted officially housing first as a model for the entire state. So that model, which is working because of the flexible subsidized housing pool, uh, will continue to get funded. Um, and because it's a C3 um, program, which is county, city, and community, um, the city, even though a lot of people are getting taken off the street from the city of Los Angeles and we're saving money as a result of that, the city has not been putting in money. The only money that's come into the Housing for Health program so far is through the discretionary funds from two council members. So um, I have had discussions with council members uh, on this particular system. I know that council member Bonin is very excited about um, collaborating on this and they have actually started a C3 program with the county, a pilot program in Venice. So this is pretty much along the lines of where the council wants to go, but I think it's 
uh, important for us to um, not just, particularly for council members who don't know a lot about Housing for Health, um, to have our commission get behind this program and to say that we are in favor of creating these C3 programs and um, using this model, which is, um, I mean, not, not a good portion of my clients actually get housing through the system because the eligibility is just a visit two times to a county hospital or um, county clinic and the application form is about five pages. So it really, um, in a lot of ways, for people who are not eligible for HUD programs or who have trouble uh, going through the process or who have trouble using vouchers and finding landlords, this is really sort of the next iteration of Housing First. So we, um, you know, I, I, my guess is that the next uh, evolution of this is that more cities and counties will start adopting this version of Housing First. So it's completely in line with everything that's going on. I agree. I don't think I heard anything to my question, which is how these other factors in the environment change this. So with the adoption of bond funding, is there a need for us to focus on rapidly getting the right land available or encouraging the city council to make the land available for the new construction? Or with the uh, collaboration that's allegedly been formed between the city and county, is there more value in our focus on improving the tracking of uh, this, uh, the clientele, which is, again, one of the issues that was raised in the CEO's report. There's other parts of the housing story that have moved at different paces in the last 12 months since this came in front of us. What I'm trying to ask is whether any of those other things become a nose ahead because of one of these developments in the funding, the strategy, or the bond. It doesn't change the model, and it doesn't change the delivery system. So. To have more bond money to build more housing means that more people will get into homeless housing as opposed to affordable housing, which is mm -hmm. a different type of housing. Um, so it's, it doesn't change anything. I, I, I mean, I'm not, okay. you, I know you. that you keep asking that question, but it, it really doesn't. What it does is re does provide more resources. Um, and the controller's office did issue a report recently showing all the land that's owned by the city of Los Angeles. Um, the county housing for health department is already uh, looking, has been looking now uh, for the past four years. Um, for uh, open lots and places where they can build and part of their goal is to build 10,000 units of affordable housing so uh, and this would be homeless housing as opposed to affordable housing so um, so it doesn't really affect it I mean it helps because we have more resources and we'll have more housing um, so that means that more people who are homeless will get housed but it won't uh, it won't impact how housing for health necessarily delivers um, their services and how they get people into housing. Okay, any other questions or changes? Okay, so we'll hear from the public now. Um, Bully Bull. Okay, the, the bull doesn't want to talk, so. All right, so one thing we have you got to go over the gutting of rent control departments in Los Angeles, the, uh, the violations of the Ellis Act. The city right now, your, your friend Bonin on the one hand, and these other guys, what they're doing is, is they're, they're gutting and tearing down affordable housing by getting rid of rent control departments in mass and building luxury apartments in their presence. And so while they do this, on the one hand, with their developer criminal friends, then they come back and they say they're fighting homelessness. I think as a policy, I think this needs to stop. They need to stop tearing down rent control departments because they've gutted so much of the stock already. That should be in the report. It's disgusting. I go to all kinds of planning meetings and I bring it up and they don't put them in EIRs. But I'll tell you this, this is a good report. It's a very good report. And, you know, that's the reason why, I mean, finally, we really got something. But I don't think you should leave anything up to the discretion of the city council. I think the city council is made up of a bunch of puppets. 
That's why the puppet is sitting there right now. He's laughing. So I think you need to tell them, you're the experts. This is what we need to do. Let's do it. Or you're not a commission. That's what Bill Rosendahl would have wanted. Because I know Bill Rosendahl was wanting to do something very independent away from the, the horse show. So I think that you should mandate these things to them, make, force it down their throats, and keep in mind that, you know, that, that the Affordable Health Care Act is going to be under attack, but you've got a load of money. You just want on all those ballot propositions. So finally, Skid Row, get them a neighborhood council too. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Adam Cohen, I think, is waving his. <coughs> You're waving yours. Okay, great. Okay. And Herman is, Mr. Herman is not here, correct? Okay. Okay, great. So let's go through um, the homeless section and talk about each one of the potential changes. And can you, um, Matthew, would you be, um, would you make that a motion, please, so that then we can vote on it? Uh, so we'll have discussion. So for each one of your changes, we'll need a motion, and then um, a motion to change the language. And then after we're done amending the document, we'll vote on the entire document for all three sections. Yeah, there'll need to be a motion and a second. So if you agree with the change, then you can second. Otherwise, we can move on. Appreciate the opportunity. So uh, bear with me. We'll try and make this as both civil and constructive and potentially efficient as possible. Uh, and I uh, appreciate, Chris, you uh, joining us tonight to ensure that we're doing it correctly. Uh, on the first section, I guess my I, I move that we add a paragraph to acknowledge the city homeless strategy Prop HHH's passage and uh, the city's commitment of resources to the problem and identify very explicitly why housing for health is the particular priority of this commission in a context of lots of other activity. Is that added in the introduction? I think I'm now talking about something in the introduction. I don't disagree that the city should explore opportunities to expand the housing for health program, but as I have said, and I'm not going to repeat, I think there's a, a missing paragraph from a contextual standpoint for the recipients of this. If you're making a motion, you need to actually exp expressly, uh, explicitly, explicitly state exactly how you want that. Thank you, Chris. To be. Uh, I move that the introduction to section one uh, add a sentence as follows. Los Angeles City Health Commission recognizes the city and county's homeless strategies as well as taxpayers adoption of proposition HHH and prioritizes new resources okay hold, I'm trying to write this health. down so can you go back <laughs> okay uh, Los Angeles City Health Commission recognizes the city and, and county homeless, homeless strategy comma Taxpayers' adoption of or voters' adoption of Proposition HHH, right, and encourages leaders to dedicate new resources to expand housing for health. Okay, so that part at the end is actually a re it's actually the recommendation that we have underneath the introduction. So are you sure you want to put that last part in, encouraging leaders? Because that's our recommendation here under Housing for Health. But, so I, but I love that in the introduction. Yeah, so no I'm just saying that can we just, I've, I've and voters adoption of Prop HHH, H. and can we, would you be okay? And, and, we pri and the Health Commission prioritizes these recommendations. Something okay. Like I, I think that's the motion. Chris? Are we, are we on even reasonably firm legal ground here? I, I think yes. so. I think Thank you. You, you can sure. make amendments. I <laughs> may not agree with it. I agree okay. that it's different. And then, and then can we say that this will appear as a paragraph in here, but not say exactly where in the introduction? I think because you need the, to make up your mind about that because yeah, because yeah, the second. beginning so the beginning actually establishes how many people are homeless and what the problem is. So we don't want to put it necessarily at the top. 
Um, there, then the second paragraph talks about how homelessness can be a cause and result of serious health issues. And then I think maybe as the third paragraph, that would fit in really nicely to say then Los Angeles City Health Commission recognized city and county homeless strategy, uh, voters adoption of Prop HHH, and the Health Commission pr prioritizes these new resources in the following areas, right? And that's sort of where all, all, all Well, that would be the last paragraph right. then. So right. maybe we should make this the last paragraph. So we talk about the goal and then we'll make that. Okay, new resources, I'm sorry. And the Health Commission prioritizes new resources. What, what was your actual wording? For the following uh, strategies or maybe it's. For the following strategies. Okay, great. So can we, um, is there a second? I'll, I'll second, second that I'll actually. Second. Okay, so it's been moved and seconded to add Los Angeles City Health Commission recognizes the city and county homeless strategy voters adoption of prop hhh and the health commission prioritizes new resources for the following strategies okay all in favor oh any discussion um can i amend the amendment to say instead of strategies recommendations because sure. what we have here that sounds like a friendly recommendation uh, okay so the amendment has changed to say recommendations instead of strategies at the end okay uh any other discussion Okay, all in favor, please say aye. 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 All opposed, abstentions. Okay, so that passes. Okay, next change that you are Under recommending. Under potable water. I think actually we call it just the section potable water, as a drinking water, because I think the safety is such a key problem. Okay, so your, okay, so your amendment would be to change, to take out the word drinking. Yeah. Okay. And then the first, I, I I guess I'm proposing, you know, Chris, again, uh, please listen carefully. Uh, I propose an amendment to, I, I make a motion that we amend the first bullet, increase availability of water through drinking fountains to increase availability of water through uh, a, a hydration stations. Okay, great. So, so our motion is to change drinking fountains to hydration stations. I will second that motion just to move things along. Um, is there any discussion on that? Okay, all in favor of that change, please say aye. 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 Oh, I'm sorry, there is discussion. Commissioner Andres Taylor. Are we also changing potable drinking water or just uh, at the top of the Oh, yes, end? okay, so we should vote on both of those changes. Yeah. So to take out the word drinking, because it's uh, redundant, and to um, change drinking fountains to hydration stations. Uh, is there any discussion? And we would do that in it the does. body too, because in that an first. Hmm? Yeah. I think the idea is that we're, we're going to have all these proposed amendments first, and then we're going to vote on the entire report okay. as amended. Right. Some of it seemed like, yeah, this okay, so <laughs> all in favor of that, of both of those changes, please say aye. 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 All opposed? Okay, any abstentions? Okay, next change. Uh, bullet number three, same page. I propose, I make a motion to strike that as worded and replace with the following sentence. Advocate that the federal government increase CalFresh slash SNAP benefit levels. Will anyone second that motion? I second. Okay, can you repeat it? Advocate that the federal government increase CalFresh. CalFresh. Slash SNAP. SNAP. All capitals on SNAP. Benefit levels. Benefit levels. Okay, so we will, it's been moved and seconded to change that to advocate that the federal government increase CalFresh slash SNAP benefit levels. Um, discussion? This is what is being stricken? Well, Bullet, um, I'm proposing is it something, just to be is clear. It, is, is something being stricken or is just that being added as an additional rule? I'm proposing to replace it with bullet three. You know, you're welcome to bullet three vote is against appeal the appeal to state and federal for food right. stamp funding. Yeah, I, um, I, will, I will not be voting for this just because I think that the state funding and the fact that that goes to immigrants should also be increased. I don't see why we would be leaving state government out of this. 
Um, otherwise, I would have been in favor of it, but I'm not, I don't feel comfortable leaving immigrants out of this, uh, unless you'd like to have a, fr uh, you would be open to friendly amendment. Um, I, 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 I'm inclined that way too, partly because the, I, we're all anticipating that there's going to be changes in this ecosystem of funding, and, um, and I'm concerned that, uh, that this is being overly precise in what we're including or excluding. So I would be in favor of including the amendment, uh, including the, the recommendation, but not striking the existing one. So uh, that I guess that would so I would be against, I would uh, I'd be against the amendment as done and I would I would recommend that we redo the amendment retaining both. Right. So like add a fourth bullet point yeah. onto the one after Appreciate the that. third. Okay. Let me offer you, one. You can always make your own uh, motion. Oh. Yeah, you could you could move for a substitute motion. Okay. okay so I'll, I'll, I would. This is my second amendment of the amendment. Uh, I would amend the amendment to uh, uh, to to include the the new item, but not exclude the existing one. Second one. Okay, it's been moved and seconded for a substitute motion, which would add a bullet point as opposed to replacing it that says advocate that the federal government increase CalFresh slash SNAP benefit levels. Any discussion on that? Okay, so the substitute motion, if if it passes, we'll replace the original motion uh, that Commissioner Sharp made so that people understand this will replace Commissioner Sharp's um, amendment. Um, all in favor? Oh, discussion. Oh, I'm sorry, discussion, yes. Can you clarify? I think I'm confused myself. Can you clarify what we are? What is the motion? So the substitute motion is bullet three we have appeal to state and federal government to increase food stamps funding. And then it would be to add a bullet point that says advocate that the federal government increase CalFresh slash staff SNAP benefit levels. So we are adding in instead of subtracting. Okay, so what would that, what does that accomplish or what does that? Well, what we're telling the, what we're, what we're asking the council to do is to Obviously, our city has lobbyists. Um, we're not asking them per se to use their lobbyists, but we're basically saying that we would like them to advocate however they deem appropriate to um, increase uh, food stamps, which are now called SNAP benefits, and CalFresh, which is the state program that are SNAP benefits. Um, and, um, and that we're, we're just advocating that they are advocating to increase those benefits. Because right now, like I have one client who gets $80 a month uh, in CalFresh benefits. So that's what's, what's happening is that people are running out of food stamps after two weeks. It's a serious problem that I spent a good portion of my early adult life working on. And it is my professional judgment which I really try and drag into these conversations because we haven't had testimony on it, but just that the only way this gets solved is at the federal level. The state pays 1% of the food stamp cost for a small number of undocumented children that are not eligible for the federal program in a section on the homeless persons. I'm just saying that I think the solution around the homeless person's benefit levels or is a federal solution. I'm, I'm not disagreeing with any part of the discussion around the overall inadequacy of it, nor of the need for the state to do things, but I think the city's legislative advocacy process that would undertake this and try and translate it into the city's legislative platform, which goes to DC every year, it's a federal fix is, is all I was trying to bring yeah, up on and, this topic. Yeah, and my point was that we send a message then that we don't care about the state funding, which is for immigrants, and we absolutely should be sending a message that we also care about state funding for immigrants. But don't we, but don't we accomplish that by adding the CalFresh if the CalFresh is the state? Or am I, am I misunderstanding what No, because we've, ta we've taken out appeal to the state and just changed it to appeal to federal. Although this amendment, okay, if we vote on the substitute motion, then the substitute motion will just be added. So it'll take care of everything if we just add it as opposed to deleting it. So we'll keep the original language and then we'll add a bullet point. But that becomes redundant. 
It is a little bit of redundancy. I would have preferred to just take Matthew's amendment and add state, but he wasn't open to that. So mm -hmm. now we've got two bullet points, but we're, I'm fine with that too. I, you know, we're just hammering it home twice <laughs> in the end. It doesn't really matter. Okay, any further discussion? Okay, all in favor of the substitute amendment to add a bullet point to advocate that the federal government increase CalFresh SNAP benefit levels uh, please say, please raise your hand actually so that I can count. One, two, three, four, four. Okay. Five. Oh, five. Hold on a minute. There's five. One, two, three, four, five. Okay. Five. And all opposed? Three. Okay. Five to three of the motion. Four. Oh, five to four. Okay. So the motion passes. Amendment passes. So the amendment, just for the purposes of the, the clerk, is to advocate that the federal government increase CalFresh slash SNAP benefit levels as an added bullet point to that area. Okay. Matthew, do you have another oh, yeah. amendment? <coughs> just briefly resting my, my voice there. Uh, I think, let's see. Uh, and next amendment is or a uh, motion voted, just to we haven't voted on the amendment that that just as a rules that thing right. and we we have stuff voted stuff. to to have the revised amendment but we oh okay vote so a motion amendment. okay so you want another vote do we need another well, vote because I mean, no no we voted because you you made the substitute motion so the so substitute motion motion becomes the main motion right. okay. that, that, and that I passed my original okay and I won't that hold it against you replaced the original don't one <laughs> please don't these are these are small fixes to a, an overall important document i think sending well, very much a on message the same page. yeah absolutely uh on uh, i guess my next motion is actually this one is very straightforward to remove bullet five and this where? is where? Oh boy, uh, same page. We're making, we're, I, we'll eventually under, get through under it. Under potable water and healthy food, bullet five, three, four, five, explore with local food banks. It just says explore. Increasing the number of times an individual can access any given, I guess it should say food pantry. Yes, that, that's a separate issue. But I, 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 so my motion is to remove that bullet for reasons discussed earlier, period. Is there a discussion on that? I, I kind of feel that this is important in terms of food access because I just have, so I work with homeless and low-income communities and I have to provide for them places where they can go to get food. And when I have to hear, I can only go to the church once a month and then the following week, me and my husband and our children have to get on a bus to go even farther to a food pantry, and then the next week having to go even farther. Um, I think it's important, A, to make the council aware of this, because I know I've talked to a few council members that were not, um, and I feel that uh, this is important in terms of having uh, access to food. Yes, so I have uh, heard that, and I simply summarize in one sentence my concern, which is that this doesn't increase the amount of food, for that population or for anyone else. It just changes who gets about how much. And I think that decision ought to be at the level of the church or the emergency food pantry. So it doesn't actually change who gets how much. It changes how much money a family or an individual who's homeless has to spend on transportation By to access the food. By enabling that party to go more times to the local place, someone else gets less from that place. But and that person has to go further. It's a finite amount of food, and if some people can get more from a particular church, say Holman here, I think they have a food pantry here. If, per, if the rules are changed and Holman is expected to enable someone to come twice a month instead of once a month, someone else gets less. Well, actually, that's not necessarily the case because what happens is as a family is moving a mile away to go to the next food pantry, someone from a mile away is coming to them. So it's the same number of people who are accessing it. You're just increasing the transportation costs. The, the, I fully get it. If I okay. may, this says explore. It doesn't say mandate. It, right. It says now, explore. Now, if you explore it and take a look at, okay, maybe they end up at the end of a week with excess food, you know, that happens with certain food banks. 
So gee whiz, maybe we need to reevaluate our frequency of attendance because right. we're ending up this this does not mandate that they do it right they could make the case hey we've only got this much and we use it up this fast so i, I agree mean, i don't see a problem with exploring it we didn't mandate yeah. it. I, okay. I like I, I think matthew's point's very astute uh and the f but the fixes actually are there's there's interesting fixes that it's not our position to say like modes of methods of communication between sites that would allow this to work uh, in a fair manner, that may or may not be feasible. But if we could do it in a way that it that uh, it's less burdensome for the recipients of these services, that would be cool. So I, I do like the idea of highlighting it. Of what? Of I do like the pre the the existing bullet because I think it does highlight uh, that, and perhaps to consider ways to uh, address this transportation issue. Okay. But, yeah, but I, I think not it's not uh, not not unfairly favor certain people. Right. Okay, any other discussion? Okay, all in favor of removing the, oh, Do was I have it a second? second on my motion? Oh, that's right, there was even a, second. a second. Okay, so uh, it's just been be. moved. I, I accept that. Uh, okay, so it's been moved and not seconded. Okay. Okay, let's move on then if it's then, not seconded. Then I guess on the same item to change the word uh, from banks to pantries. I would yes, I would, I would, I, I will second that if that helps move oh, things Susan along, uh, from food banks to pantries. Um, so, is there any discussion on that? It's been moved and seconded. Uh, all in. Changing that isn't just in the recommendations, right? It's in the text. Of the text. And the yeah, and it, and it can be in the text too. We can use the word food pantries. Um, all in favor. Uh, if there's no discussion, doesn't seem like there is. All in favor of change that to food pantries, please say aye. Aye. All opposed? Any abstentions? Great. Thank you. Next. Uh, moving forward through the document, uh, the, I, it sounds minor, but it caught my eye. So, I, you know, someone stop me if it doesn't need to be changed. But just the, the, the word shuttle in the transportation one, I thought it was a formal system being uppercase. I don't know if that actually needs a motion to make shuttle lowercase to reflect that it's a generic concept as opposed to a specific it, provider. It doesn't. That's an administrative, like, no motion. periods and commas, so we don't need a motion for that. But I have highlighted that on my <laughs> form. Along those same lines to add page numbers when we get there. Yes. Well, this, yeah, because the final typesetting will be done by Cal State Northridge, so with a nice cover. Um, okay, so next. Uh, under affordable housing. Okay. Um, I guess there were two things there. Um, <coughs> I mean, I, I think in the section of affordable housing, I think the recommendation of the city council that to me makes most sense at this point in time is to adopt the linkage fee to increase the resources for the affordable housing trust fund to increase the amount of affordable housing construction. I think that ha has no relationship to the first bullet. Um, I think that's, that's very specific. I think that's overly specific and then it knocks out any other potential programs that So I'm trying to figure out what's up. meant by the first bullet. Well, okay, so right now, policy is centered around affordable housing as opposed to homeless housing. The difference being that affordable housing has a uh, specific income uh, maximums, right? So it's, yeah, it's based on the area median income. So it could be 30% AMI and below, 50% AMI and below, 60%. For homeless housing, this prioritizes people who are currently homeless. And that is different because in affordable housing, it's typically a nonprofit developer who creates that housing. They also create the application process. So the, in the application process, they actually, as of right now, can exclude people who are homeless. So if we ask to expand homeless housing, what we're asking for is to expand housing that is specifically directed for people who are homeless as opposed to people who just meet the income requirements and can be completely excluded from affordable housing. <coughs> and I think the council understands that because that's sort of the wording of um, measure HHH, which was for homeless housing. Yeah. I worked extensively on measure JJJ, which includes 
a number of very detailed provisions about the specific AMI tiers, the income yeah. tiers. So I'm very she familiar with there's extremely low income, very low income, and low income. There's three tiers. And right, I, and we're I, not asking about income. So that so JJJ is different because HHH is providing housing for people who are homeless, similar to housing for health. Housing, the housing for health system, homeless set aside vouchers, those are all specifically for the homeless population, as opposed to just people who meet specific income mm -hmm. tiers uh, or income requirements. So we don't want to go back to a system where developers can exclude people who are homeless and we do need to make sure that we're prioritizing homeless housing since our homeless population is continuing to increase and this section is on homelessness so so i make a motion to strike the first bullet from this section because i believe the uh, commission's focus on creating new housing options for the homeless was in the first section of this section of the report and it, it struck me and potentially others as confusing that uh, it appears again here. I, the, the well, no, those are two different things. So the first part. Oh, is there a second <laughs> for this? That's a good. Point. Is there a second? Is I'm making a, a motion to strike to the to three strike words. The first bullet. Expand homeless housing. Okay. Without a second, I think we should move on. Okay. What's next? Uh, I make a motion to. Uh, for the third bullet, let's see. Explore transparency measures with nonprofits contracted with city uh, by City of Los Angeles, trying to capture the uh, some additional detail to the word with. Okay, with nonprofits contracted. Okay, I would, I would agree with that I will second that motion to add to take out the word accountability and transparency measures okay uh, is there any discussion on that okay uh, all in favor please say aye. aye all opposed any abstentions okay that is changed to transparency measures next um, on veterans um, I think I think the motion that potentially captures my, the brief note I have here uh, would be, let's see, I make a motion that the current sentence be changed to increase resources and attention to veterans, housing, and medical services. It, it, replacing the word expand access, increase resources and attention to housing and medical services for veterans and expedite service connections. Just proposing to replace the words expand access with increased resources and attention. Okay, so it's increased resources and attention to veterans. I guess it's the veteran housing and medical housing and medical services needs. and expedite service connections. Uh, and I guess there's sort of a comment in there. Uh, or by expediting, I, or is that a different thought altogether, the expediting? Let's see. The service connections. Well, no, increasing resources, you would not do that by expediting service right. connections. So let me just leave it as, uh, my motion is, again, uh, increase resources and attention to veterans, housing, and medical services. Is there a second? Be very fast if there isn't. Repeat the, repeat the motion. One more time. Increase resources and attention to vet veterans, housing, and medical services. And, and expedite service connections, or are you just leaving that? Well, I'm not, I will acknowledge, I'm not sure what that means. Uh, so well, I don't expediting think I should service it. connections, okay, so currently uh, there is a very convoluted way apparently that veterans access particularly housing and VASH vouchers and I have um, had to service many veterans who have been sent to numerous locations having different workers who apparently are supposed to connect them to these VASH vouchers and it not, and like nine months later I'm shocked because they still don't have their voucher they still don't know what the process is they still are sort of out there not getting connected to the services that they need not getting connected to the voucher not having housing um, and so 
we need to expedite those service connections. That means that if you go to um, uh, a caseworker at a nonprofit um, and they're not connecting you to the VA or they're not connecting you to VASH vouchers or they're not connecting you to those services, what's happening is that they're just looping around in the system and they're not getting connected. It, it happens constantly. I mean, it's, ha it's happened to at least 75% of my veteran clients. They just can't, they're not so can getting make, the housing. <laughs> so I'd like to make an amendment to the amendment. Uh, Substitute motion. Two bullets. Yeah, they're different uh, problems. To do what? Yeah, to turn it into two bullets? Yeah, so the first okay. one as stated, and, and for ex expedite service connections. Uh, okay. Help me. <laughs> Great. Uh, so ex expedite uh, service connections by uh, 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 service connections. For veterans housing? Uh, yeah, it just uh, what it was helpful, what was illuminating to me was was uh, that this isn't just the VA-based counseling people, but all those other entities that are giving guidance to them. Right. So, exactly. So it would be. Yeah. A, so what, it's. What would be? So it needs. Yeah. A, so it's not it's just the like VA. A, that that's kind of what I was getting to. Is that it's not. A, we're not just a, talking here about the VA. Yeah, we're talking about all the people who get of a paid. Statement. So, yeah. Um, um, okay, so expedite service connections for veteran housing and medical services. Maybe it's expedite connections to other services, such as housing or medical. So it's a, so it's a little more active voice rather than the passive. Would we say other services, though, as opposed to just services? Expedite connections to services for housing and medical? I, d I don't know. I think housing and medical is probably the, the main one. Or would there be something else? It just sounds like a... It's strangely worded sentence Ex expedite connections to services for housing and medical medical care does that sound right is that, that what we're talking fine. about okay okay all right so if we do two bullet points the f so that would be the second one expedite connections to services for housing and medical care um, then the first bullet point would say what in your substitute motion? It says, as, uh, as Matthew. Increase resources and attention yeah. to expand veteran housing and medical services. Sure. Is that right? Okay. Hold on. Let me write this down so that I know exactly what the amendment is. Increase resources and attention to... Veteran housing and medical services. Oh, to expand medical. Yeah. To expand, okay. And then the second bullet would be expedite connections to those services. Right, okay. So I'll read the whole motion. So the substitute motion is increase resources and attention to expand veteran housing and medical services. The second bullet point is expedite connections to services for housing and medical care. I think that says it pretty well. Right. Okay, it's been moved and seconded for the substitute motion. Yes, the first one is increase resources and attention to expand veteran housing and medical services. And the second one is expedite connections. No, no, no. Who, who second? Who is the oh, the mover was Jonathan because he, this is his substitute Braun. motion, Commissioner Braun. And the second was um, Commissioner Vic, I think. No, oh, okay. Cotto. Commissioner Cotto. Cotto. All those in favor? Okay, any, dis any discussion on the substitute motion? Okay, all those in favor, please say aye. Aye. All opposed? Any abstentions? Okay, any other 
changes? Uh, word change on uh, one, one more last page um, on heroin overdose. Uh, heroin E at the end of uh, heroin yeah. on the top there. And then uh, I think this is a, a friendly amendment. Uh, subsidize availability of the drug Narcan. Right, I think that's what they're asking for, is a, that the city assume some of the cost burden, or city plus county, perhaps. Uh, but I, I, I think that it's a cost burden issue, right? Mm -hmm. so I would, yeah, I would, I would second that, just to move things along. Well, or if it's so a bad it idea, say, I'm happy to So it would say uh, subsidize, subsidize, actually it should say, instead of provide, well, providing widespread availability, yes. So it, so it should probably say subsidize widespread avail availability. Well, I think there, there are two issues, if I can remember. One is there's a cost issue, as there is for everything else in the, in, in the report, right? And then the other issue is around the uh, first responder side, training and protocol, right? There are sort of two parts to it, I think. Yeah. Okay, so, so could it... Okay, so could it said subsidize and provide widespread availability, so we're just adding the subsidize to the front of the sentence? Sure. Would that be along the lines of what you're looking for? Okay, because I think that would be great, a great uh, addition. Um, okay, so I would second that. We're just adding the word subsidize and to the front of the recommendation. Um, is there any discussion? No, okay. Uh, all in favor of that change, please say aye. aye. All opposed? And any abstentions? No. And, and we'll note that her heroin has to be, is misspelled. Yeah, that's what I yeah, said. Yeah, I just, I changed yeah, I that. that. Um, like spelling and uh, commas and periods yeah. and that kind of thing is all administrative, so yeah. we'll go through the document and um, make sure that everything's spelled correctly to the, to the point that we can. Um, the only other thing that I would like to say is I kind of agree that preservation of uh, housing is definitely a homeless prevention measure. Um, so under affordable housing, which would be page six, under recommendations, um, I think if we could add a bullet point that says um, preserve um, multiple issues. Do we want to say so units? Convictions. Right, right, right. Ellis Act. Uh, hmm. Do we want to say preserve affordable housing, or would people want to say um, preserve rent-controlled units to prevent homelessness? Because this is really, this is a really a serious issue. There's we are losing rent control departments. There's three separate problems, and I leave it to the group whether they get combined or separate. One is affordable housing is being removed for larger developments. Second is RSO units, rent stabilization ordinance, which is housing built before uh, basically 35 years or more ago. Those are being removed, and then the. Th Third is Ellis Act, which is uh, evictions in order to change the use of the property. So people are being displaced basically for multiple reasons. Uh, at the very beginning, we talked about how general or how specific do we dictate the, the policy language in this, this document. It certainly would be uh, an amenable motion to me to have some language that uh, puts us on record of opposing uh, the loss of uh, rental housing, affordable housing, and so we could say preserve rent controlled and affordable housing see the uh, non rent controlled units are not affordable because the landlord can raise them to market rate well some are affordable and they're being demolished under ellis act or converted to condos or airbnb uh you know in in some areas the the rent particularly around the reef development discussion last week right it came up that lots of the housing on usc is still low priced uh, even if it's not RSO. So, uh, so it's affordable and uh, Preserve rent stabilized. Stock. Okay, how about we just say rent stabilized. Pre preserve rent stabilized and affordable housing to prevent homelessness. Does that sound like a good bullet point? Does that get to what? I don't know if you have to say to prevent 
I mean, the intention's pretty clear, preserve what your first part of your sentence. I'm not sure I need to say to prevent homelessness. Okay, mm -hmm. preserve affordable and rent stabilized housing. It's pretty straightforward. Mm -hmm. Are people okay with that? Yes. Okay, so I don't know who made that motion. <laughs> Do you want to make that motion, or Commissioner Sharp? Yeah, I, I, I certainly uh, in uh, recognition of our public comment and our widespread sentiment uh, that we need to prevent the on ramps to the homeless uh, challenge, we we move to recommend that the city take steps to prevent the loss of affordable and rent control housing units. Okay, that. So the okay, so that changes the language of the oh, bullet point. So, I didn't mean to. <laughs> but so it was just preserve affordable, <laughs> preserve affordable housing to prevent um, pre preserve pre preserve rent stabilized and affordable housing. Preserve, I think that's just I what make we a motion say. that we add a bullet point to preserve rent stabilized and affordable housing. Okay, so we moved and seconded to add the bullet point preserve affordable. Uh, rent stabilized and affordable housing. Any discussion? Okay, all in favor, please say aye. 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 All opposed? Any abstentions? Okay. Any other changes from anyone? All right, well, then that looks like we've got ourselves an annual report. Have um, we adopted the other no, sections? No, we have to do, we have to adopt the other sections. So, um, so with the amendments that we passed, um, we just need a motion to adopt the annual report, the sections, um, which include homelessness, lifestyles, and- Healthy living. Uh, I'm sorry, healthy living. I keep saying that, because it was originally lifestyle. Um, and uh, how, um, what was it, medical services? Can I get a motion? So moved. So to moved adopt, and to adopt those sections. And do we have a second? <laughs> Great. All in favor of passing the annual report with those three sections? Um, oh, any discussion? Okay. All in favor of passing the annual report with these amendments uh, in the various sections? Please say aye. 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 All opposed? Any abstentions? Okay, woohoo! <laughs> I just want to thank everyone <laughs> for their very hard work on the commission. Since this is our last meeting for the 2015 2016 year. Um, I think I, I feel, oh, are there? I thought this was our last agenda item. Sorry. Oh, items for f items for future. I need your I need your phone. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry. Um, so I think I don't think we have no because we already had discussion there. Okay, so um, we'll do items for future discussion and then public comment. We have to. Yeah, I'm in a column for two. Is that what you mean? Yeah, yeah, I'm, I am. Okay, are there any items for future discussion? Although this is kind of our last meeting, so. <laughs> well, let me propose them so that Candy has it in case it's a different group that's looking for some guidance from this group. The Affordable Care Act, Medicaid, and the future of health care access in Los Angeles, I think is an important role for a future iteration of the Health Commission to play a leading voice on in light of uh, very terrifying national developments and threats over the last week. So I encourage the clerk to take note of uh, that as a potential future discussion item. Great. Okay, uh, any other future discussion items? Okay, great. Uh, Billy Bull, otherwise known as Wayne Spindler. I think um, what they should do is uh, is call this really you should do it in his honor the Bill Rosendahl Los Angeles City Health Commission name it after him because I mean he, it was his brainchild he w it would have never happened without him and I, I think it would be good because he's a really nice guy and one thing Bill Rosendahl always did he brought warring factions together and just hammered out a deal yeah, you got right now with the, the city activists, such as myself, get illegally arrested, for example. He'd sit people down and settle it. Now you don't have that. 
So I think it'd be a good idea to remember what he was. That he was a peacekeeper. That's what he was. And also, um, this uh, this report will go will go far. I don't. But they're going to do a new commission. But now you, you got you got the way to go to start this. But there's so much money now. It all passed. M, J J J, H H H. Of course that idiot R R R, which is why I got arrested back in May. It's uh, so far it's losing. So um, that'll be my curse on the council for that. But with all this money going around, uh, billions of dollars are going to be going around. Uh, we we got to get we got to get this housing for the homeless, the veterans. Because what they're going to do with this money is that they're going to pull it together, they're going to put it into junk bonds, and then they're just going to build this so-called affordable housing, which is going to be luxury housing, but they're going to put it in places like CD11, where the median income is $100,000, dollars $150,000. We need it in this district, 8 and 9. These are the priority districts, 8, 9, 10. We need to get the money into here, Marquise Harris Dawson's district in particular. Um, and, and current prices district. I wish they'd come here because this is their money. They could be getting the lion's share of this money and they don't send people here. It's a shame. Yep. Great. Thank you. Okay. So now we will move to public comment. Bully Bull. We'll just say for the puppet. Okay, bye everybody, and thank you for your contribution. Yes, thank you. <laughs> See, that's why I, I bring my puppet, so when I don't use the puppet, that means things are working. Lately, I, I had to put the puppet away the other day. I went to a meeting, people straightening it out, they're getting the message. This election was great. Because this election shows you what happens when you got a country divided. Now we're going to spend four years unraveling what happened. This, this, this is going to be a disaster, this administration. This administration is going to elect Supreme Court judges that are going to turn 30 years of law right on its ass. And the, the, Trump's going to do it. And then you're going to look back four years, you're going to see all the protests in the streets, you're going to see all the violence. and. People are wasting time with that. The, the issue is the money. The issue is it takes a billion and a half dollars for Hillary to run. To run. Trump spends $775 million to run. Villarigosa is going to raise $20 million to run. Everybody's got to raise all this money to run. And they're buying the elections. The enemy is the people that bag the money up and buy our elections and buy everything. That's why we don't have a right to vote. They're taking away our right to vote by buying and rigging election systems that do not allow participation in a democracy. So we need, we need Citizens United to be the law to limit these criminals who went to the Supreme Court and said money is speech. Money's not one man, one vote. Unfortunately, um, we had a chance with the Supreme Court to tip it. Trump's going to tip it back. They're going to keep spending the money. So remember, every time they put up a project like the reef, we lose. Thank you. Thank you. OK. Um, and Mr. Herman isn't here. OK, so um, I'd like to adjourn in memory of um, Bill Rosendahl. I also want to note that Sal uh, Esparza um, uh, unfortunately wasn't here <laughs> for the end of uh, our, our health commission but was really instrumental in helping us move the report along in the beginning so I just want to acknowledge him even though he isn't here and for all the help uh, that he gave us in the beginning um, yes so we're so these will be printed actually so we'll have a nice cover with graphics uh, and we're going to print 30 of them, so there will be 15 for the commissioners and then 15 for city council members, and maybe we'll do a little overrun um, so that we have extra copies. It'll depend on the budget, really, but, um, but just so that we have extra copies for folks. There is no budget. No, the, we do. We do. The, the, there was a grant that was given to Cal State Northridge, and there was, um, I think, $100,000.